of things to look at when using the Dato True Score system. Now, the first thing that we do, especially when running an important event, is we take a Wi Fi analyzer, analyzer that's set up on uh, either an iPhone or an Android phone just to get an idea of what channels are being used in the area. If you look at this thing right here, it's showing me that channels uh, 1, 2, and 3 are pretty busy. So I want to avoid those channels just so that we get some clear communication. Now when it comes to choosing the channels for the TrueScore system, it's okay if each system uses the same channel. There's not enough traffic to create any kind of a problem. You just want to make sure the channel you do use is not used by other systems in the area. Next thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you plug in your base before you start the software and you turn on the transmitters. Now, the transmitters have a tiny white switch right here next to the charging port. You turn that on, you're going to see the lights come on. Turn them both on. Also notice that every transmitter has a code on it, D223. This one is D229. Now the head transmitters have numbers as well, and so do the triggers. So every device has a number. All head transmitters start with an H. Might be uppercase, might be lowercase. Also, when you type in these numbers in the system, the upper and lowercase does matter. So now I'm going to go ahead and open the TrueScore software. Um, on XP, it's important that you run the software as administrator. So I'm running the software as administrator. Now the first thing you do is you're going to go to radio controllers. See how the base is green? That means the base is plugged in. Next thing that you would do is you would verify your devices. Like I'm going to open this up. If you had judge triggers, you'd have to type in the handset IDs here. I don't have any judges triggers set up. So I'm going to go down to no judges. You just have Hogu sensors. So D229, D223, I verify they're the right ones. They are activated. Now I hit link to base. And I wait. Green on blue. Now you notice the red body did not light up. This is excellent. This gives you a chance to look at one troubleshooting item that does happen commonly when you first set the system up. Look at D223. You've got a flashing blue light along with the red, or a blue light along with the flashing red. That means that when it tried to talk to this transmitter, it kind of got confused. And that generally only happens when you first set the system up. It's really easy to resolve. Go ahead and take your pen, or whatever you're using, to turn the power off. Turn the power off. Turn the power back on. And you'll see that the light will go green. Just a second here. There they go, we got both green. Okay, now if they don't go green, just go ahead and hit link to base again. Now notice, I'm on channel one, and 223 has kind of gone red again. Now I look at the transmitter and it's fine. It's not uncommon for the devices to fluctuate between green and red. Um, one of the big causes are setting a cell phone right next to the machine. A cell phone can create interference, okay? So what you wanna do is you wanna get the cell phone at least three, four, five feet away from the device. Another thing I'm going to do is because I found that channel one, two, and three were busy, I'm going to go ahead and go up to channel five. I'm going to again hit link to base. There you go. You've got both devices up and now they're both staying green. And again, it's not uncommon to see them fluctuate a little bit, but if it happens a lot, there's usually some sort of interference. Now, go ahead and go to Program Options, verify your points. Now, you have to go to Program Options at least once when you start the software. I don't know why, it's uh, sometimes people will forget and they won't get a ready signal. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and go to Ring Manager. I'm going to go ahead and check my thresholds. Now understand that this gender and weight has nothing to do with how the thresholds work, just the threshold levels. Even if you use the levels drop boxes and choose a different threshold, only really the threshold number is what matters. Those are just informational items. You can go ahead and change the names up top, and you can also select the flags, which I'm not going to worry about right now. I say OK. Now you see it right here. It still does not say ready. It has to say ready before you can start the match. The reason is, is that, that these two transmitters, though the right side is green, the left side is red, means they're not hooked up to any devices. So i got to plug these into Hoagies before I can start a match. So right now, I'm going to go ahead and plug these in. And there you go. Now they're both green. A real quick note, these numbers right here are voltages. This gets too far under 4 volts, it means the batteries are getting low. 4.03, uh, 4.20, those are real good voltages right now. Now you're ready to start a match.